Okay, students, as we begin to uh, start to turn the page and get actually into our school year, we have been having a little bit of a discussion on the Cornell note-taking format and uh, how to take notes in uh, Cornell format and how those notes should look in a class like a math class. Okay, so it is an expectation that we're going to be using the Cornell form uh, format, so let's take a quick look at how it's going to work. Okay, before each class, when a new lesson is going to be covered, you are expected to view the video containing the basic information needed to work the problem and take notes over that video. Now, viewing the video also includes the audio, so please do not make the mistake of turning the audio down or anything like that. Uh, I have condensed the notes as far as possible so that you can uh, still get the needed information. Uh, the trade-off on that is I will be constantly pouring information information into your ears during those recordings about special pieces of information uh, that accompany the notes. So if you are only watching the video and not actually listening to the audio, you're going to find yourself missing out on a lot of the material and you probably won't be very successful. Okay, so we're going to view the video and we're going to take notes over it. Those notes are to be taken in Cornell format. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any control over this. This is a directive that comes down from my bosses. They say that we're going to do it in Cornell note format, so that is exactly what we're going to do. Okay, now uh, the procedure uh, as far as the notes when you bring them to class is going to kind of work like this. Your notes are going to be checked daily. So anytime we have a note assignment and you come to class, uh, it will always be checked. Okay, so uh, what I will do is I will do uh, note, uh, notes checks uh, anytime notes are assigned. Uh, we will collect maybe three or four sets of notes, that set of notes, uh, three or four of them will become a single grade into the grade book. So if you miss one set of notes, it's not going to kill you academically, but it will take a pretty good bite out of a grade that will end up in the minor grade category. Okay, uh, But if you miss a set of notes, like I said, it doesn't kill your grade, but it will injure you in several other ways. We'll get to that here in just a moment. Okay, So if we collect notes every three or four days or so and that turns into a grade, basically what that's going to mean is three to five times per grading period, you're going to be getting a notes grade into the minor category. So if you make a regular habit out of not getting your notes taken care of, it is probably unlikely that you're going to be successful in geometry. You better take care of this step if you want to uh, have an, uh, pa a shot at passing the course. Okay, <clears throat> basically we're going to do the notes like it is kind of like a participation grade. It is an all or nothing effort. Okay, you can't halfway participate. Either you do or you don't. Okay, so if your notes are present with you in class and they are complete and they are in the Cornell format, then you are going to get a, a, a total grade, a full grade. If it is, they are incomplete in any way, whether you skipped stuff or uh, didn't finish the video or didn't do it in the correct format, I'm not going to give you any credit at all uh, for those. So let's make sure that we get them done and get them done correctly. Okay. When you come to class and your notes are uh, complete and in the correct format, not only are you are going to get credit, but you're also going to receive the assignment that we're working on for that day. If you do not have them complete, what's going to happen next is you will have to finish your notes anyway. I will have paper copies of the notes in the classroom, and you will be uh, required to complete your notes for no credit. Uh, not only that, of course, as I've already said, there's a lot of audio in those videos, and if you are making a habit out of um, completing your notes in class off of my paper copies, once again, you may be getting your notes done uh, for no credit, but you are missing a lot of information that you are not getting because you're not listening to the videos. So anyway, you're going to have to waste your class time getting the notes taken care of anyway before you can get your assignment. That will chew up your class time. By the time you do get your assignment, it is unlikely you will be able to finish during class. Now you not only have uh, probably more notes coming for that night, but you also have an assignment that needs to be finished before you come to the next class period.
Okay, so you can see that this does get very bad very quickly. Some people make the mistake of thinking they're going to start the year off not doing the notes, just kind of play it by ear for a couple weeks, see if I'm serious about it, things like that. And unfortunately, even by the end of a couple of weeks or even one week, people find out that they have dug themselves too deep of a hole to get back out. So make sure you are getting yourself uh, started on the right foot. Uh, do not uh, test me on this one. This one's going to hurt if you do not get your notes taken care of. Okay, so let's look at how you actually take the notes. Many of you have heard this information before. Uh, for different classes, but it's slightly different for a math class. Cornell Notes wasn't necessarily invented for math. Okay, so we got to make a couple of adjustments. Okay, so a couple of things you're going to have to do. At the very beginning of the lesson, uh, there will be a title screen, and the very second screen that you see during the videos, uh, it will have three items on it. One of them is our objective. That is my statement to you of what it is that we are supposed to learn for the particular lesson we are going into. Then there will be a language objective that you do not have to copy down, but that is kind of a statement of what type of skills you're going to be expected to perform by the end of the lesson. And then you have a new edition uh, this year, which is what they call the essential question. The essential question is basically a reflection, uh, reflective type question for you to ask yourself at the end of the lesson, at the end of the day, before you move on, can you do the skill that this particular lesson is having you do? Okay, so you're required to copy down the objective and the essential question. So whatever uh, those are on the video, you will write those down where it says objective and essential question. Also, you're going to write down the date. Uh, just in case your notes get out of order for some uh, strange reason uh, throughout the course of the year, you will be able to uh, kind of put all of the information in order as far as date is concerned. Okay. Now that is kind of the beginning uh, piece of information for our Cornell notes. You can see I have it at the top of a piece of paper here, but it does not have to be at the top of a piece of paper. You can begin uh, wherever your last set of notes left off. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of subdivide our paper into some pieces here. You're going to draw a sub uh, horizontal line underneath your essential question. That'll kind of kind of like an eye catcher type of a thing on your paper, uh, almost like an announcement that a new set of notes is beginning to begin here. You're also going to need a vertical line coming down the page. Now it is debatable where you will actually want this vertical line. We definitely don't want it way out in the middle of the page because actually what we're doing is we're dividing our page into a left side and a right side. The information that's going to be on the left side of this line is very short short, very compact. The information that's going to be on the right side, it's going to be a lot more words, a lot more sentences and things like that. So we need more space over on the right than we do on the left. So I suggested just as a starter, uh, maybe uh, draw your vertical line an inch or two to the right side of that uh, red line coming down your paper. And if you're not familiar with an inch or two, we're talking about maybe the width of one finger to three fingers on your, your hand. And then if you decide that that's not enough space or too much space, uh, as you um, fill out more and more pages moving forward, you can adjust that line as you see fit. Okay, over on the left side, this is the uh, the kind of the major pieces of information. As you can see on the screen there, vocabulary, formulas, methods, diagrams. These are main ideas, critical information, important terms, names of rules, theorems, stuff like that. This information, it's almost like a table of contents, and it's going to appear in the left-hand side of your paper. Okay, this is going to be a very limited information that's over there. We don't want a lot of stuff over on the left side of the line cluttering things up because basically when you're studying, you want to be able to flip back through your notes and just kind of scan the left column as you turn each page looking for keywords or diagrams that will trigger something in your mind uh, to let you know that, yes, here is the area you want to start looking for this thing you are looking for. Okay, so that kind of information goes on the left. 
and then over on the right are the details that go with it. So on the left side, we may have put a new term. On the right side, the definition that goes with it. We may have put a new name of a new theorem over on the left side. On the right side, it will be an explanation of how the theorem works. Uh, on the left side, we might have put a formula. The right side would be an explanation for how the formula actually functions or what the variables in the formula actually mean. Okay, so you got main ideas on the left, supporting details on the right. One of the more important things to do in the Cornell notes is to summarize uh, what the lesson actually brought uh, to you. Okay, so as you are flipping back through your notes, you'll be able to read your summaries and get basically a one sentence or two sentence a synopsis of what it is that the lesson just taught to you. Okay, so the last step that you will hear on your notes is me saying to write your summary sentence. Uh, so if you learned all about the different types of polygons, uh, your summary would be, hey, there's different names for polygons based upon how many sides they have. Uh, that would be a summary. Uh, also, this is a good place for you to uh, write anything uh, that was uh, confusing to you or any concerns that you have, because hopefully you just vis uh, viewed and listened to the video. So if something was uh, not making any sense or perhaps the video became garbled at some point and you could not understand and the audio, whatever the problem was, that would be a good place to write down those concerns. Because as we said, with the curve of forgetting, if you don't write that down or think about it several times, you are going to lose that information by tomorrow morning at tutorials or by the next class period when you come back to geometry. So we want to write that stuff down so we can be sure to recall the information that uh, we needed assistance with. Okay, so here is a, an example that of uh, what a set of notes might look like. Okay, you can see at the top uh, we have an acronym that we typically use. You'll see TSW or in this case TSWBAT. Uh, most objectives start off with the student will. So you see TSW quite a good bit. This TWISBAT that you're seeing up there, that is the student will be able to. Okay, and that's a typical uh, objective lead-in. The student will be able to classify types of angles. That information came straight from the notes and you wrote it down. The next one uh, is the essential question. Do I know the different classifications of angles? That's going to be the question that you ask yourself at the end of the notes and the end of the assignment before you walk away from this lesson. Do you know that? If you do not, more studying is needed. If you got it, you got it. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, notes were taken, and we have four different types of angles, acute, right, obtuse, and straight, and a little sketch of each of those uh, possibilities, an acute angle, a right angle, an obtuse, a straight angle. Are those the only examples that could have been drawn for an acute angle or an obtuse angle? Of course not. Okay, It doesn't have to be all-inclusive. It doesn't have to be perfect, but later on, if you see the term straight angle and are not familiar with it, and you go, wow, I need to look that back up in my notes, I want you to be able to flip back looking down those left hand columns and see a straight angle uh, in that left hand column kind of calling to you, hey, this is where you want to look. Then you can, yeah, oh, there's the term and there's the definition right next to it. Okay, so over on the right hand side, you have the supporting information, acute angle, the, def, uh, the term on the left, the definition is an angle measuring between 0 and 90 degrees. Over on the left, right angle on the right, an angle measuring exactly 90 degrees. And hey, there's some more important information about a right angle, so we write that down too. Sometimes a small box is placed near the vertex of the angle to show us that it is a right angle. That's the way the right side of the page works. Examples were provided in the notes, so they were copied down. And then at the end of the notes, the student wrote their own summary, and they summarized it themselves by saying angles are going to be classified by the degrees that they measure. And the student also recorded a couple of uh, pieces, uh, a couple of questions, little curiosities that they had, things to ask about either in tutorials the next morning or in class when they have an opportunity. You know, hey, these angle measurements that you got up here, it talks about everything between 0 and 180 degrees. What happens if you get to 180? 
81 degrees. Is there an angle that is up there that high? What is it called? Why are their measurements higher than that? Okay, questions along those lines. Uh, and other questions there. Hey, you talked about a symbol for right angles, but you didn't talk about any symbols for other types of angles. Are there any symbols? Are those coming later? Uh, what's the story with them? So those are questions that you know might be uh, you know uh, needed to be addressed uh, to satisfy your curiosity, or perhaps to point out that maybe the notes were incomplete. I just failed to mention it. Okay, so uh, again, as I already said, the notes are going to be condensed as far as possible. So the question is always, you know, can I just, can I abbreviate? Can I only write down what I need? Uh, and things like that. And unfortunately, the answer to those questions is going to be no. You're going to have to write down the notes uh, the way that I have them as far as the, the material that's there. You got to write down everything that I write down uh, because, again, I have, I have kind of simplified it as much as I possibly can. Uh, you need to have the information that I have. So no other simplification or claims that I already knew that, so I didn't write it down. Those are going to be reasons why we're going to call your notes not done, and you're not going to get credit, and you're going to have to get them complete before your uh, worksheet is delivered to you in class. Anyway, there is an example for you if you can kind of make your notes look similar to that. And of course, if you need more than one page, you just turn the page and keep going. Okay, so I appreciate you taking time to tune in and do the Cornell notes. Good luck on your first set of notes this weekend. Bring them with you to class on Tuesday.